All right, well, Ukrainian President Zelensky is a green monster of envy over Israel because the U.S. helped Israel intercept Iranian drones, and it has never done that for Ukraine since the conflict with Russia began in 2022. Zelensky is so desperate to get our attention because his media darling status has been revoked. He's wondering, where are all the cameras go? Who turned off the lights? Why is nobody here every time I talk? They used to listen. What happened? Where, where is an entire generation of Ukrainian men? Oh, they're all dead, thanks to me. Not just that, though, but Vogue was just here. They wanted, CNN was my best friend. I could get on any award show I wanted. Yeah, it was on the I, Academy Awards. I had red carpets wherever I went. They thought that I was Churchill. What, where'd they go? What Sean happened? Penn was giving him awards. Yeah. He didn't win. What's, right. that must be... <laughs> That must be very upsetting to a narcissist. Uh, and now, with the U.S. actually helping Israel, he feels like chopped liver. This is the Washington Post over the weekend. Uh, he is saying, Zelensky, you shot down missiles for Israel? I thought you loved me. Why haven't you done that for me? I thought was you, I was your boy. Joe Biden, I thought we were bros. Uh, I've made this reference before and I have to make it again because every time I see this desperate Zelensky, I think of this friends clip where Monica is in the boys apartment and no one wants to go and visit her house. So she bakes fresh cookies. So in this friends reference that I cannot help myself but make, Zelensky is Monica. I don't know, but it smells good. Mm. <laughs> fresh cookies. Hot from the oven. Ooh. Please have some. Only the cookies are bombs. <laughs> right. <laughs> so he's got these fresh cookies and a fan. Like, come over here. Come to me. I have the sexier work. I'll give you all of our land. Oh, wait, I already did that to BlackRock and Vanguard. What do we have left? What can we give? Oh, how about the wounds of our li of our women? Which we're it would now be hilarious, away. right? Because I mean, Russia's right there, and you know we hate Russia. Like we, I mean, we don't like Iran, but we really hate Russia. So I mean, they got they got that going for them. They're just right yeah. there. Look at all the Russians right Help there. Us. Come back. Come. Don't come you remember back and look Red, at me. Red Dawn 1980s? Like, come on, the Russians are bad, right? Don't you want to continue to attack them? So Zelensky may actually, I mean, we may come back if they switch the bombs out for cookies. I'm there, right? Okay. Yeah. He might want to consider that because not only that, Israel's getting everything that he's asked for U.S. firepower. Um, so to make another friend's reference, Ukraine is Jennifer Aniston. Israel is Angelina Jolie. See what I'm see what I'm saying there? Uh. Okay, enough of that. So here is what he said this weekend about the US helping shoot down missiles for Israel. He says the whole world saw that Israel was not alone in this defense. The threat in the sky was also being eliminated by its allies. And when Ukraine says that its allies should not turn a blind eye to Russian missiles and drones, it means action is needed, a bold one. It's not rhetoric that protects the sky. It is not opinions that curb the production of missiles and drones for terror, he added. So basically, U.S., I see you. You're cheating on me in public. Uh, in the absence of direct involvement, Ukraine is now begging for scraps. Here is what Foreign Minister Dmitry Kuleva said this weekend. Even if you can't act the way you act in Israel, I know I'm not your main squeeze, Right. I'm your mistress, but still give us what we need and we'll do the rest of the job. It's a fair question, though, given that the U.S. supports Ukraine and Israel. Why does one war require direct involvement and the other doesn't? Well, here is what U.S. National Security Council spokesman John Kirby told reporters on Monday. He says that the U.S. will not take a combat role in Ukraine. Here's how he explains the difference. If the U.S. Can, and, and allies can help shoot down Iranian drones over Israel. Why can't they do the same over Ukraine? Yeah, I knew this question was coming too. Look, different conflicts. Different conflicts, different airspace, different threat picture. It's different. <laughs> It's just different. It's different in, strokes. In, <laughs> in other words, the the Russians are there, and we've got bases all around through the Middle East. So we have, you know, we have different bases, and, mm -hmm. and we can't really. Be, actually, what I like is no, he, I can't. He knew, that, he knew that question was coming, but he didn't do his homework to give a proper answer. <laughs> right, He's exactly. like, oh, yeah. I knew this question was coming, but uh, uh, you, uh, different. There it's you just go, different. I, I knew that. I knew this ignorant question was coming.
Yeah, you knew it was coming because it was asked of you three times on the Sunday shows, by the way. Like, mm -hmm. it was asked of you multiple times by George Stephanopoulos and everyone else about the, the conflict. Also, one of the questions was asked was, why you, you guys told uh, Iran not to attack, uh, and they did anyway. So what does that mean for the White House? Mm -hmm. I mean, they couldn't answer that question either. There's a lot of unanswered questions over the past 48 hours. Yes, indeed. So now you know from that brilliant video clip that Ukraine is not Israel. They're they're different oh, okay. countries. Got it. Did you learn that? Got it. Okay. Now, of course, it is inconsistent foreign policy, but only a fool would expect consistent U.S. foreign policy. And Zelensky is clearly that fool. Uh, if he wasn't, he would have made good on the peace terms he agreed to two years ago. People wouldn't have had to die since. So imagine you're a Zelensky. You have a peace deal. That would mean no one else dies. No one else in the Donbass gets attacked by your own country that had been attacking that region since 2014. You give up land that doesn't want you anyway, and you rebuild your econo economy. But he doesn't do that because the U.S. promises, hey, you're going to be a national hero. You're going to go down in the history books like Churchill uh, if you agree to this. But then the cameras get turned off, they go away, and you're left on a losing battlefield and a population that's either dead or hates you. That's what he's got right now. So yes, he is a fool. Can you see it any other way? If so, let me know. Let's just go over what Zelensky could have done if he wasn't a narcissist and cared about saving people. Okay, let's let's just review this. Uh, let's see, he could have not ordered an attack on the Don on Crimea in 2022, because when he did that, that prompted the mayors of the regions in the Donbass, this contested area, uh, this area, the Donbass, has been attacked by the Ukrainian army since 2019, uh, 2014, rather. When Zelensky took office in 2019, he could have done something about it and stopped it. He didn't. Uh, when the mayors of the Donbass region asked Russia to come in and protect them, in 2022, Zelensky could have not thrown innocent lives up against the Russian wall in order to get back the pe people that they were torturing. That's one thing he could have done. Uh, when peace talks were held in Istanbul in the spring of 2022, he could have held up those agreements. He could have, uh, which did lead to a withdrawal of troops from Kiev that would have allowed the people of the Donbass to live peacefully, to join Russia as they had asked and voted to. Instead, Zelensky swallowed a load of garbage from the West saying that they're gonna to continue to help them get that land back. They have not done that. They have not come even close. They've only allowed Zelensky's delusions to lead an untrained army of soldiers to their deaths. And let's remind ourselves how that is going because we're now almost a year past the counteroffensive that we were promised last year that Ukraine was going to go in and take all that land back. Here's where they started, June 1st, 2023, when we told, were told the counteroffensive started. Here's where they were today. They have not taken land back, not at all, nor should they get that land back and go back to being able to torture the people in those regions. Uh, they have earned only death on their side and now silence. So yeah, Zelensky is a murderous fool and I feel no sympathy for his, um, you know, sadness and the fact that he's feeling unpopular and Napoleonic. No, I don't. Uh, but here now is what the media's warning is happening because the U.S. is just not opening its wallet and giving more money to Ukraine right now. Uh, here's from RT today saying Ukrainians are beginning to dislike the U.S. <laughs> they don't like us. Imagine uh, that. Raise your hand if you care. Now, absolutely, I care that Ukrainians get to live. I don't care if they like me or not as an American. If they dislike American government, hey, we're the same we got that in common, right? We should, my government should never have led yours into war. Uh, but it's almost as if they appealed to our American sensibilities to be liked when the war happened. Like, hey, you put Ukrainian flags all over your profiles and your trucks and in your cities, in American cities. Ukrainians love that. They respect Americans. They see what you, you are the savior of this story. But now look, you didn't open your wallet. They don't like you anymore. So that's how they're appealing to our sort of base need to be like. So raise your hand if you well, care. I watched a, a little mini documentary yesterday that showed the PR campaign that was to construct Zelensky in a way that people would like him more. So it was like 
picking the t-shirt and had to be green and why he had to have like this whole campaign to make him more relatable to the average person. And it was a complete PR thing. Mm. Of, course, of course it was. This, the, the green and, suit. And, and of course, yeah, the, the green suit, the t-shirt, he's everything in the bunker. Everything he does, everything yeah. about him. Um, and he's been on US TV. So this afternoon, uh, he went on PBS, the news hour, Zelensky did. So he's getting uh, very, very... Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking B for? B-level media now? Yeah, but uh, desperate. And according to, this is inter- you know, the reporting from Moon of Alabama, which has been phenomenal throughout this entire conflict. The Ukrainian President Zelensky is lobbying Congress through U.S. media now for more weapons and monetary support. It requires him to finally depict the situation as dire as it is, they say. So he went on PBS NewsHour this afternoon. And told told them, I'll give you a very, they asked him how dire the criti- the circumstances are for the critical defense systems there. And he says, I'll give you a very simple example. He said, 11 missiles were launched towards the thermonuclear station, the, the thermal power station upon which the electricity supplied in the Kiev, in the Kiev region uh, depends. We managed to intercept the first seven, but the remaining four hit the power plant. Why? Because we had zero missiles left. We have exhausted all missiles that were defending uh, this pl- this power plant, he said. So basically saying, without anything being sent from the U.S. anymore, we're done. We're over. And before, it was always like, we're winning, we're doing great. So see how this has all changed now, the rhetoric? It he was- just told the media that Ukrainian deaths were oversold and that they were winning a month ago. The idea, though, in the beginning was, we're doing phenomenally, so you should be happy about all of the weapons you're sending. It's you, you're We're winning, right? right. That's, and we're winning, and all of the propaganda out there about us losing is just, that's all it is. It's propaganda. We're, we're beating Russia. And now, of course, we, we all knew that that was a lie from the very beginning. And anybody who's watched our show, we've exposed those lies. But now they have to completely flip the script. So now they have to admit, we're dying here. We have nothing left. Yeah. So, which was always how it was going to go. And now they're having to finally tell the truth. Now we'll see if Congress approves this aid package, which looks like Speaker Johnson is going to do for right. Ukraine. Not peace, guys, which could end it today. But what's another $60 billion going to do in Ukraine? Nothing. You could shoot, shoot down a few more missiles. You could have a few more Patriot battery systems that by the time they actually get there, you'll be done anyway. Like, what is the point? Other than American taxpayers are footing the bill for no, this No, you're right. Because some of those weapons that and were it's... approved earlier this year, they said, great, we'll start making them. <laughs> and you'll get them later this year. You'll get them in 2027. Yeah, go yeah. ahead, Philip. Well, the thing is, like, until, until this line changes, like, is $60 billion going to push all that red out of there? No. So then what is the point? Right. What is this? All you're doing is extending a stalemate. Yes. Right. Yeah. Well, the point is the military and industrial it's, complex it's, can exhaust all of its resources, can push out all its old stock. And then Raytheon and Northrop Grumman can build new ones at taxpayer expense. And those stock values go up and they continue to make great money. That's the that's follow the money in all of this. Right. It's not for us. So, no. yeah, I, I apologize to all Americans, though. It's making us unpopular. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. You know, YouTube thinks that you'll actually like this next video right here. It's personalized based on your own viewing habits. So if you watch the video, please leave a comment. Let us know what you think about it. And we will see you next time, everyone.